You know it's weird, the Gerudo Fortress in Ocarina of Time. This area always felt super odd to me, and even today it's really confusing. You have these random carpenters who are trapped, and even if you mod the game to try to free them early, you can't until the fights are done. But it's actually this fortress that introduces something really, really neat to Ocarina of Time. Now, this isn't the only area where we can encounter this type of thing, but it is one of my favorites. And that is the Wandering Guard who can arrest Link. So let me show you how interesting these guards can be. I hope you enjoy this really strange breakdown of just how powerful these annoying guards are. And of course, a big thanks to Boosteroid for supporting these silly gaming experiments that I do on YouTube and for sponsoring this video. Boosteroid lets you play your favorite games through the cloud on any of your devices without having to have a powerful machine yourself. You don't need to upgrade your hardware, install games, or even wait for long updates. You just pick up your device, connect, and play with their cloud gaming service. They now cover more than just the UK and Europe with their new US-based servers. And with over 400 different games to play, it's a pretty sweet bundle. So if you want to start playing right now, click my link in the description below to check out Boosteroid today. So Gerudo Fortress is crawling with guards, and when these guards see you, they of course arrest you on the spot. Link doesn't even put up a fight, he just throws his hands into the air, and then he's thrown into jail. I never really understood that, I mean, we can totally just go up and slash these scars in the back, probably scarring them for the rest of their life, even though they pass on the ground and are technically still alive. But we have no problem hitting them when they can't see us, or shooting them with arrows, but apparently if they see us, we just give up all hope. And that's kind of what makes this part interesting. We have this stealth minigame where we can actually sort of knock out the people who arrest us. But you know me, of course, I want to break things, so that is what we're going to do. What if you ran to a Gerudo guard, not at the Gerudo fortress? What would happen exactly? Well, as you may have imagined, they will still arrest you, and they will take you all the way back to the fortress and throw you in the jail. You could be on the desert, or, you know, you could be in front of Hyrule Castle, and they will still take you all the way back to that cell and throw you in. So honestly, it's kind of neat that this enemy is programmed to always put you in the same spot. But we need to break that. <laughs> we need to push this to its limits and see how powerful this really is. So let's go to a boss. Let's go to Morpha. What happens if we get grabbed by Morpha and start getting thrown around and then get arrested? Well, apparently, it doesn't matter. Even though Link is suffocating, he still gets arrested, the fight is broken up, and he gets thrown in jail. I was kind of surprised. I was thinking the boss was going to stop this from happening. But the power of the Gerudo soldier is just too much. So powerful, in fact, that if we were to fight Ganondorf and try to summon one of these soldiers right here and there, well, even during the cutscene, when Ganon is beneath the rubble, we get arrested. Zelda's like looking at us all happy, but she doesn't know that Link's getting arrested in this moment. And of course, the guard spawns in and just takes us, takes us straight out of this cutscene and throws us back into jail. So the power behind these soldiers is actually kind of impressive. Not only can they grab you anywhere and throw you back into the cell, but they can interrupt anything and interrupt you in that situation and immediately take you to jail. That's quite the power. Okay, so how about this? I'm gonna break the timeline. I'm going to the courtyard in the child timeline as adult Link and talking to child Zelda. What are you gonna do? Well, apparently, and rightfully so, Link is arrested. No situation is safe from the time police. So now, obviously, all this is really entertaining. It's kind of neat to know that no matter where we are, we are always going to get warped back to that same place. But I want to apply this to situations where that might not be the case. And so we're going to actually exit out of the game and try something different. So what happens if Link gets arrested while he's on the title screen? So during the title screen in Ocarina of Time, Link is riding around on Epona, and he rides all around Hyrule Field, and then basically the game takes you to different cutscenes from the game. But here's the kicker. None of these are pre-rendered videos. These all happen in-engine in the game. So these are tangible game environments that we can mess with. So let's try it out. So Link is riding an Epona, and I spawn a guard behind him. And so Link gets arrested, and we get warped. Now, for some reason, this actually took me to Castletown as adult Link. So the background is destroyed, as you can see, and I'm just falling. You can't see me anywhere on the map, but I just keep falling to my death over and over again. When I respawn, I just fall and die again. However, we are still in title screen mode, and that means we can press a button and warp to something else. So after pressing the button, it took me to the Twin Rova Naburu cutscene. Of course, nothing can save Link, so we're gonna spawn a guard behind him and have Link get arrested. And this leads us to something kinda weird. 
It takes us to a solid purple background, and we can hear like the destroyed castle town theme in the background. You know, the ambient noise that plays when you're in that area with the Rededs? We can hear that being played, even though the screen is solid purple. But because we're still in title screen mode, we can press a button. And pressing this button takes us back to the title screen. But we're gonna go through this again. No, God, please, no! Now, normally, that would be the definition of insanity, but I have a feeling we're gonna get different results. So we get arrested again on that title screen, and we go back to that weird castle town area, but then we advance it again. And this time, we're going to trigger a different cutscene. And the cutscene that is up next is that Death Mountain crater cutscene that you encounter with Sheik. Link basically runs down, sees Sheik, and they have a conversation. Except this time, Link runs down, gets arrested, <laughs> and the conversation stops. But this time, something really bizarre happened. So I was still playing as adult Link, but it took me to the child Link version of the castle town at night. So you can see the couple dancing around, you can see all the different objects, the dog. Now, obviously this map is kind of weird looking. You can see the collision map beneath it and the normal image that's projected is kind of skewed. It's enlarged and pushed into the sky. So there's this weird forced perspective of the camera as soon as we get to this map. But then I realized something is happening. We see Link round a wall, and then he looks shocked, and then he falls. Now seeing this, and seeing the different camera angles that I was cutting to, I realized it was playing that Death Mountain Crater cutscene on the wrong map. So for some reason, we were in Castletown, yet it was trying to load the cutscene for that Sheik encounter in the volcano. And of course, because of this, everything was broken. But this only lasted a moment, and then it went back to the title screen. So at this point I realized that this warp that happens with the guard has other properties to it. And if we warp during specific cutscenes, those cutscenes will either replay upon loading the next area, or they could repeat in a kind of different way, which I'll get to in a second. Okay, so we've tried different areas in the game. We've tried the title screen. What if we actually try the opening now? So the opening of the game obviously is a really long kind of drawn out cutscene where Link's on a bed, there's like this flashback stuff, and it kind of takes a long time to get through. So of course, I want to break that. So apparently, if you try to arrest Link as soon as the game starts, the very first shot you see overhead with Link on the bed, if you arrest Link in that moment, the game just kind of hangs up and crashes. Like the guard appears, arrests the child, and then just sits there, spinning around on the bed, not knowing what to do and then the game just breaks after a while. It just doesn't do anything else. So I was curious, I'm like, is this happening because it's his very first shot? What if we try the second shot? So I waited until Link is shown sort of from the perspective of you can see the side of his bed, and then I spawned the guard. Kind of the same thing happened, but the game didn't hang up. So no warp happened, Link was arrested, and the guard just stood there. And then of course, Link's nightmare begins, where you can see Ganondorf chasing Zelda on the horse. And of course, Link as a character, as an actor, as our player, is in this cutscene. So that means we can use Link's location, spawn in a guard, and then arrest him in his dream. <laughs> oh, this is too much fun. Not even Link is safe in his nightmares. Honestly, I was very, very surprised with what happened because I did not expect this. So when we get arrested and thrown in jail during this dream, it actually takes us to a blank map. You can see this brown void and Link just kind of walks in from the left. Well, apparently this is the bridge room between Kakiri Forest and Hyrule Field. This is the area where Saria stops you and gives you the ocarina. I'm sitting on this map and a cutscene is playing and Ganondorf's pursuit music from the nightmare is still playing as well. Turns out that the entire map and all the characters are invisible but is playing the cutscene that happens when Saria gives you the ocarina. I'm not sure why this is here, because this is on a different map, but uh, yeah, here we are. Perhaps this is a side effect of warping off the cutscene map. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But for some reason, Invisible Saria just straight up gives us the ocarina of time instead of the fairy ocarina, which is really bizarre. I'm not entirely sure why this happens, but it's kind of funny that we get this right now in the dream. Well, of course, the Dream Police step in and arrest Link before he can get the ocarina, and apparently, history just repeats itself. As soon as we're arrested, we appear back on the brown void, and the whole thing plays over again. For some reason, warping to jail on this map always takes us back to the same area. And if we let this play out, it'll take us to Hyrule Field. Except it's nighttime and we have zero gear, so we're gonna die. So of course, I don't wanna die, so I run straight onto Hyrule Field and I get stopped by the owl. 
Of course, my brain is beginning to melt in this super, super long conversation. So I place myself under arrest to save my sanity, and I get warped to the bridge throw-off point beneath the Gerudo Bridge. So I fall down below and I appear at Lake Hylia. And this is because the spawning location for Young Link is different than the spawning location for Adult Link. Adult Link always goes to the prison and Young Link, for some reason, they think it's okay to just throw him off the bridge. Like a 200 foot fall into water. <laughs> so even if his body's broken, he's going to drown. But apparently that's a punishment for a kid. I honestly never understood that when I was younger. Heck, I still don't understand it. But yeah, that's what happens when you use the Gruta soldiers to arrest you at really strange times during the game. But I hope you enjoyed this bizarre video. Subscribe if you did, and I'll see you all really soon in the next one. Cheers!